In this video tutorial, I'm going to work through a more advanced KP calculation exam question, the type of question that's aimed specifically at the A and the A star candidates. But I'm going to give you a step by step method, explain very carefully my thinking so that you can tackle the more tricky questions with more confidence. So let's jump in. We've got two moles of sulfur dioxide, two moles of oxygen sealed in a container. Uh, we've got a stoichiometric equation and a value for Kp. Calculate the total pressure needed to give a 90% yield of sulfur trioxide. Well, our starting point is always to write an expression for Kp, because from there we can figure out what we need to work out in order to come up with an answer. So Kp is equal to the partial pressure of sulfur trioxide raised to the power of 2 divided by partial pressure of sulfur dioxide raised to the power of 2 multiplied by the partial pressure of oxygen. And to work out the partial pressure for each of these gases, I need to know the mole fraction, which means I need to know the number of moles of each of these substances at equilibrium. So that's the first thing that we're going to figure out. We start by writing out the equation again. So we've got 2SO2 gas plus O2 going to form sulfur trioxide. And down the side here I'm going to have initial amount of each in moles and the equilibrium amount in moles equals m is just my personal shorthand for equilibrium. We know that we start with 2.00 moles of both sulfur dioxide and oxygen and right at the beginning before either of them reacted we will have no moles of sulfur trioxide. What we now have to work out is how many moles of each of these we have at equilibrium because we need this information to work out the mole fraction, the partial pressure and so on. Let's start with sulfur trioxide. We know that we want to make a 90% yield of sulfur trioxide and sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide According to the stoichiometric equation, we've got a one-to-one -one ratio between the product and the reactant. So if I start with two moles of sulfur dioxide, 100% yield would give me two moles of sulfur trioxide, but we're looking for a 90% yield. So 90% of two moles is 1.80 moles. So the equilibrium amount of sulfur trioxide would be one point. 0 moles, which means that if we started with 2 moles of sulfur dioxide and 1.8 moles of that has been reacted, we are left at equilibrium with 0 0.20 moles. So that also can go into our little grid, into our table. So that leaves us with oxygen to figure out. The ratio of sulfur trioxide, or sulfur dioxide, but the sulfur trioxide to oxygen is 2 to 1. So if I make 1.80 moles of sulfur trioxide, then that tells me that 0 0.90 moles reacted 2 to 1 ratio. I started off with two moles of oxygen and if 0 0.90 moles has reacted then at equilibrium I would have 1.10 mole left. So that also can go back up into my grid. Let's return to our expression for Kp. We need to know the partial pressures of each of our gases and the partial pressure of a gas is the mole fraction times the total pressure, which we don't know. This is exactly what we've been asked to find. So we're going to give that a symbol, Pt. 
So to find the partial pressure of sulfur trioxide, it's going to be the mole fraction. So that is number of moles at equilibrium, 1.80, divided by the total number of moles. And if you add up 1.8 plus 1.1 plus 0.2, it comes to 3.1 times the total pressure. And that is 0.581 times total pressure. Similarly for sulfur dioxide, 0.20 over 3.1 times total pressure, which comes to 0.0645 times PT. And for oxygen, we have got 1.10 over 3.10 multiplied by the total pressure, which is equal to 0.355 times PT. So let's put all of that into our expression for Kp. Kp was 0.13 atmospheres is equal to 0.581 raised to the power of 2 times Pt raised to the power of 2 over 0.0645 to the power of 2 times Pt to the power of 2. I'm going to put that in brackets. Multiplied by 0.0645. 355 times Pt. So these are the expressions for each of the partial pressures of our gases. Now hopefully we can see that Pt squared over Pt squared cancels out. So you can see with these questions, although they look complicated, they're written in a way that are reasonably easy to sort out once you get going. So where are we now? We now know that 0.13 is equal to 0.338, so that's 0.581 squared, divided by 0.00416 times 0.355 times the total pressure. So I'm going to Divide each side by 0.13, so that will end up down there. And I'm going to multiply each side by total pressure, so we can see that they cancel out. And we now have an expression which is going to give us an answer for total pressure. I've just about got enough space, so total pressure is equal to 0.338 divided by 0.13. 0.0416 times 0.355 times 0.13. And when you plug all that into your calculator, it comes out at 1761 atmospheres. So the key with these questions is, I'll go back to the beginning, to always start with your expression because from there we can work out what we need to find out in order to be able to sort out this question. These grids are a very useful way of ordering the information and being able to make sense and use our ratios and not get ourselves into a model. From there, we were able to work out the partial pressures or at least an expression for each of the partial pressures which we could then use in our equation for Kp and come out with an answer for total pressure. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.